Hey guys, this is Shaft of the Cleaning Casting Crew. You are watching the ASUS ROG 2014 Winter Event. This is Yansu Ladder Edition, and my co-caster is Drew Universe. Hello guys, how's it going? <laughs> going great, man. So, so far, we've been watching a best of five. This is game number three. Jadong has basically got the game point in two games. What are your anticipations for this game? What do you think these players are thinking? And where's this game going to go? It's Yansu. I think, you know, Yansu is one of the probably the most uh, natural maps of the map pool that we have right now. The most standard 1v1, if you will. Um, I think, you know, with any series where a player is two up and a best of five, that Jadong feels like he could try something wacky. He could try something uh, that if he doesn't work out, He's still got two more chances to get it right, yeah. and so he doesn't uh, probably isn't going to worry about doing everything too perfectly serious. So you know we know he's very good at this game and very serious, but I think he might be thinking, you know, maybe I'll try something different, see if I can catch my opponent off guard and just knock him out. Uh, for Gung Fu though, mm -hmm. he's got an uphill battle. He has to win three in a row, or it doesn't count. Yeah. So he has got to make something happen here. I would anticipate one option right out of the box would be aggression. Yeah. Another option would be another dangerous uh, proxy play. Maybe not cheese, but a proxy play. Mm -hmm. um, so I have no idea what he's going to choose, but uh, it looks like actually he'll start with the forge after gateway and uh, go kind of standard. Yeah, well, here on the bottom left-hand side of Yantu Ladder Edition, the blue Zergy McFerguson representing Team Evil Geniuses, it's Jay the Dong Dong! And in the top right corner of Yansu, in the wintry side, we have the green Protoss, Team PK's Gung Fu Banda. There we go, man. Well, Gateway, then Forge. That is actually a little bit of an odd opener. Typically, you'll see Gateway, then Cybercore, then uh, the Nexus, or you'll see Forge on the low ground into a wall-off. This, in particular, leads me to believe that... Gung Fu Bana is up to something. There are actually he two is. cannons, three cannons in the back of Jay Dong's natural. And wow, the Dong has not uh, really responded here. He's only just now re realizing it as he sends his drone back home. One of the cannons is canceled as uh, Gung Fu Banda realizes that these cannons are going to get up and there's nothing the Dong can do about it. I think it's a good thing he canceled it, also for the reason that uh, right next to that natural is the high ground uh, little cliff archipelago there, where the queen could possibly snipe it, and Gung Fu Banda wouldn't have the high ground vision to attack back, so I think it's good to keep the two cannons towards the right hand side. Queen's gonna pop out here, probably gonna be Marco back, yes, Jadong is on top of it, but this hatchery is already down to half health, and it looks like Jadong is in a little bit of a spot here. He can work off of one base for a while, but he wanted that hatchery for a reason, and he doesn't want his play messed up, and he's gonna have to prevent this cannon rush from evolving into something more. Well, he's also taking a third base, and I think one concern that he has to uh, face here shortly is the fact that if Gungu Banda realizes that third base is down, and he's sure to scout for it, uh, he's going to need something to contest that. That he will, and he does have that easy option of the uh, alternate second base, but Gung Fu Banda is also expanding behind this, and he's going to try and get that early economy and rely only pretty much on this cannon rush to keep his opponent contained. However, that won't stop Jadong from sending forces down the main ramp. These cannons are way out of the way at the mineral line of the natural and won't stop Jadong from moving forces out. He can fully move the queen to the, thir the third base location here for his new natural and get the queen in and set up the larva. So Gung Fu Banda isn't going to contain it as well as he could have, I think. No, definitely not. This, uh, this map is not the easiest one to cannon rush on ever for the very reasons you cite. Uh, the only way to safely tuck the cannons uh, in the mineral line, you have to reduce that surface area somehow, is to actually put it out of the way of the mineral line. Or, I'm sorry, out of the way of the uh, ramp. I see. Yep, just one of the downsides. But Yansu also has some things that favor the Protoss other than working against them, uh, mostly in the sense that this is such a tight map. Should the game reach a point of, uh, you know, Colossi or something like that, looks like a Stargate's on the way, so it may be a while, but uh, if it ever does reach the Colossi point, then um, it's really easy for the Colossi to maneuver around on such tight, narrow quarters with so many cliffs, and uh, Gungu Banda will have a huge mobility and just powerhouse advantage of the death ball army wreaks havoc on this map that's correct let's see if he can get that far though 
He is, uh, I think he's pretty content with uh, his success at the natural, but he can probably infer that Jadong just went for an alternate second base location. And um, I don't know if he'll infer that it's this new base down here newly, um, but he hasn't seen the one up in the initial uh, new natural, if we will, for Jadong. He's only seen that new one, brand new, popped in the bottom right-hand corner there. Uh, so he's actually, the probe was destroyed, won't be able to scout further for now. But he is sending out a Phoenix uh, hallucinated to check it out. He's going to see right now that Yerong is actually getting up to three bases here. Yep, and this Stargate about to be popping out an Oracle. And it looks like that Oracle is going to be rallying right in to uh, this location where he assumes that the third base is going to be. He is looking there. Uh, but right now it's just the unfinished hatchery at this time. He's actually turning a little bit. Um, coming straight forward, he actually is going to find a lot of lings. I guess that could cause some damage, but there's nothing to hit here in this uh, lower corner. He needs to go in the uh, mid-left there, uh, which is where all the saturation is for Jadong's drones. And even if he did come over there, um, well, actually, there is no spore in the in the natural yet. So he could do some devastating damage if Jadong wasn't paying attention. There's but he's already seen it from the creep. Yep. Just as soon as you mentioned no spore, it's like Jadong was listening in on our conversation. That he was. <laughs> that he was. The dog. Here come the Lings in the front door. All right. Lings in the front door. Some Zealots trying to poke in the front door of a Jadong's base, but neither one managing to get in. Looks like a probe will fall, though. Those force fields doing just as good a job keeping the probe out as well as the Lings. Here's the third base. It looks like he's going to be able to pin these Zealots up against the uh, hatchery. Unfortunately, that's going to mean a lot less surface area, and very few of the Zealots die there. That's right, they are actually very low on HP. They won't have time to regenerate their shields, I think, and with three queens in play, they will be able to pop quite a bit here. The Oracle not getting microed, still in play though, dealing plenty of damage, actually is pulled away. One Oracle still being used though to pop this first queen. Transfuse does get off just in time. These Zealots are very weak though. The micro is very critical here for both players. Ling's coming in to reinforce. That should be the end of most of the aggression with this Oracle running out of energy pretty quick. But the second queen might fall thanks to the Mothership Core. However, there's not enough energy to recall, so he's gonna be careful to save that for later. Mm -hmm. Uh, dude, this is coming down to the... Oh, he bolts. sniped Look it. here in the main. Uh, there's a lot of zealots uh, harassing the mineral line. Queen going to fall here. Oh, so close. He's chasing that queen around. Most of the units trying to circle back in here to save the queen. As this battle is starting to wind down, looks like these zealots are going to eventually be eliminated, but this third base has been taken for Gungu Banda. That it has. And actually, though, he did uh, lose that Mothership Core right at the last moment of that engagement. The Queen's just barely able to pop it off. Gung Fu would have to make a new one if he wants. Uh, he's actually going to start with some uh, Void Ray production here. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to play into exactly, but he's actually going to start with some more uh, aggression here. Uh, some Queens, I think, I don't think they transfused each other. They're two very low on HP, actually. But Jadong was able to put that off. I think it was just a couple of Zealots that were running by. Jadong now going to finish taking care of these rocks to connect the creep between the bases and move a little bit quicker through there. He was interrupted from that the last time. And uh, Gung Fu Banda going to do another scout to see exactly what Jadong is up to. Robotics, uh... Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. A robotics bay is on the way right now. Try saying that fast. Um, but anyways, a robotics bay is on the way. This is going to tell us uh, Colossi are going to be the end game here for Gung Fu Banda. Mixing that in with Void Rays is almost sneaky in a sense that uh, Corruptors are the counter to Mutal or to uh, to Void Rays. Coloss or no, to the Colossi, and okay. then the Void Rays counter the Corruptors, so it's forcing Jadong to go to a Mutalisk tech, um, or to go for Broodlords, both of which are easily countered by Stargates. It looks like Gung Fu Banda is using the Robo Bay to force his opponent into something that the Stargates are going to be strong against. He's trying to control the tech switch. That is a very smart move. When you can control what the opponent is making and you, you have the ability to prepare for it, you're basically telling your opponent what to make. And your opponent doesn't want to do that. Your opponent wants to control the situation, choose the units that he knows are countering yours in play. But that's the thing about that Protoss choice in particular. And the Zergling is going to try and poke in here. A couple force fields used to reduce the surface area. Uh, Lings will be able to keep the map control. Uh, with their speed, but uh, I think this is uh, it's a small, I call it a small death ball. With this many sentries, even if they are fully surrounded, uh, sentries in the force fields can make this small army take on quite a lot of Zerg units. And actually, there will be an observer with this to try and push back some of the creep, but Gung Fu is out of position. These Lings are running by, going to try and poke into the natural wall here, it looks like. However, another Oracle is going to try and push them away. I don't know if that's going to be enough. 
Yeah, that Zealot actually had a perfect block off there, so Jadong would have had to fight it and the Oracle uh, to actually break in there, and he knew he just didn't have the units. He's going to try again, though, at the third location, and the wall is not complete at all. There is a nice little open path in the center there. The cannon is guarding part of the mineral line, but he's actually going to just choose to go into the natural, and a Colossus is going to be here to defend this, but the, some probes are going to fall here, none of them being microed, I believe, uh, and just two zealots warped in to take care of it, but I think it's slightly, um, a little sloppy from Gung Fu not pulling those probes back. He needs all the money he can get right now. Mm, yeah, it's true. The thing is, if he pulls them back, they can get surrounded where they can't move. By ah. continuing to mineral walk, they uh, the links have to chase a little bit. And look at Jadong here, though. He's responding with the Ultralisks. He is getting the Chitinous Plating. He is getting armor level 3. Melee level 2 is almost done. He is prepping to fuel up and take Gung Fu on, head on. Well, these Colossi, of course, completely useless against heavy armor units. They're great against light armor like Lings and Hydras, but against Ultralisks they barely do any damage whatsoever. AoE just not that good against something with 500 HP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would think that, you know, I know an Ultralisk is a single unit, but I've seen a Colossus do devastating damage, and while that's usually against a, uh, a large amount of small units, uh, I would think that it, it still does a decent amount of damage to the Ultralisk, depending on the range. We're going to see right here it looks like the total amount will possibly work on one Ultralisk, but the Queen Transfuse is just in range to work, and what little army Gung Fu Banda has on this ground here is going to be whittled away to nothing almost instantaneously, leaving just the three Naked Colossus with the Stalker, Zealot, and a Void Ray, the three Musketeers helping out. Reinforcements are here uh, with one Immortal, but there's so many Ultralisks here. It, with the Queen Transfuse, I don't see this happening for Gung Fu Banda. No, it is not looking good for Kung Fu. Um, the thing is, if Gung Fu ever does decide to push out again, there are so many Lings, there are 20 Lings just parked right here, ready to flood into any base that is left exposed. Hmm, I see. It will be very difficult, and that causes uh, the Sim City that we have to see anytime someone wants to secure their base, they have to put up the wall in the front there. And this actually the Gateway and Stargate are weakened a little bit from a prior engagement, so it could be knocked down quickly if Gung Fu is uh, taken off guard here. So Ling Run by going to be working out uh, not too well for Jadong, just getting a little scout by. He can easily repunish that with how much money he's got coming in. And he's um, actually able to scout the fourth base with it, so it's definitely worth the cost he paid. Absolutely. You only need a couple to get by there, and it, they're very cheap. It's, it's very economical to use these as scouts. Mm -hmm. You get two for 50 gold. You can't even get that with a drone. That's right, and looking at, actually, <laughs> Jadong almost doesn't need the Zergling as a scout. He's got creep almost the entire southern half of the map. It's mm -hmm. it's almost just a winter map and creep. There is no jungle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he is getting very close to Gung Fu's base with this creep, which means his movement speed is going to be quite unparalleled, and his mobility, anytime Gung Fu wants to move out and do something, he pretty much doesn't have the ability to cause disruption. I see he's got the warp prism there, and he can use that to warp in uh, Zealots and try and take out a base and snipe it. But Jadong has so much vision, I don't see how he wouldn't see it and be able to anticipate. He's actually going to do a double-pronged attack, evacuate the new fourth base completely of all those probes, and have the Zerglings work on a couple cannons and then the base. He's got another uh, poke-in he's done at the natural here with this other second pack of Zerglings. This is just the Zerglings. He's not even using the Ultralisk yet. He's just sitting happy right now. Lings are so fast, man. So fast. Um, these Lings... Uh do have adrenal glands, so that's basically a free plus one upgrade. It's it's insane, dude. So you, you just called... Uh, is that a winter side of the map? I always thought it was like rocks and sand. Actually, you know, I'm not sure. It could be sand. I've always just taken it as winter, um, but I see, you know, no snow on the trees around it or anything. Uh, it could be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just want... Well, there's some, like, some green little patches right next to the cliffs. I would indicate the ice between the third and the fourth top base for Gung Fu. There's some ice down there. Is that ice? I, I'm not sure. In any uh, case, we yeah, have the Oracle with a load of energy working on this uh, southern hatchery for Jadong. Gonna possibly knock it down. He's got full energy, so he might be able to knock this hatchery if there is no retaliation. Uh, Jadong actually busy with some zealot aggression on the left-hand side, but this Oracle working down this hatchery pretty good. I think actually it might have enough to knock that hatchery out. Um, it might not matter much, um, but it is an interesting pickoff. And actually, the 
main engagement going to happen here. Corruptor's in play now, and there's plenty of High Templar to do some storms. Archons as well for splash damage. He's got all the splash he needs, but he's got to be so careful with these Ultralists. They can just wipe the floor. They're almost fully upgraded, if not full already. Last I saw was a plus two melee upgrade, but everything else was maxed out. Yeah, they will actually be able to finish off this hatchery, but Gung Fu, uh, he better mass recall, man, unless he wants to lose his whole army here. The Broodlords are in play, and it's time to go. Yeah, the Broodlords are definitely much better at sieging up a high ground than the Herp Derpalisk. Herp Derpalisk has to watch out uh, for the Concave. If they get caught in that little choke point, it's game over for them. The Broodlords, however, pushing the Colossi back. And as you mentioned, recall gonna be necessary. This is not looking good. He did actually try to do so, and right before the teleport completed, the Mothership Court was sniped. So Gung Fu is stuck here. Ouch. He has to make this work. He has got to make this work. He will get a nice pick on one of those Ultralists and some decent storms on the Broodlords, but with so many Queens spare here to transfuse, it's nullifying all the energy of the High Templars, and they can't regenerate it as fast as the Queens transfuse. Void Ray will be good against the Corruptor, but the numbers do not favor that at all. Immortals will be able to work on the Ultralists, but with all this aggression from the Broodlords and the, the, the Mortal Colossus just can't fight it off. Corruptor is also attacking the Immortals. Uh, I'm sorry, the Colossus. Only the one Colossus getting out, if that, actually not going to make it. So Gung Fu just lost his entire army. The one thing remaining is the Oracle at the bottom right corner there. Have you seen uh, the video called the ha uh, Hyun Shirlisk? I have not, but I can probably infer. <laughs> yeah, check it out, dude. It's I don't want to ruin it for anybody, spoiler alert, but uh, it's basically one Ultralisk taking on an entire army with yes. like 20 Ultralisk, or 20 Queens behind him transfusing. Hyun is playing against someone, I don't remember who, that's not important. But um, there was like 50 transfuses and that one Ultralisk had uh, 27 kills at the end, and that was the only army unit left on the map in a base race situation. Yeah, that is very, very exciting to, to hear about, actually. I like seeing those interesting kinds of plays, which is another one here. The fourth base is going to be, uh, fifth base going to be retaken for Jadong here. Uh, six, actually, I'm sorry, but this top lower right corner is, again, the Oracle. Going to be able to actually force a cancel. If Jadong's not paying attention, though, he's not going to get the money back. He doesn't really need it, but uh, he will eventually need that base if this game goes on much longer. He's going to need this mineral line, and he just didn't get the cancel. He just lost that hatchery. But it doesn't matter, it seems, with these Broodlords attacking the fourth of Gung Fu again, and he needs that income. He's running low on his third, and he's forced into this engagement here, where these Corruptors even are getting the transfuse, it looks like. Infestor is in play as well. There's a number of uh, Tempests now in play that have the range advantage, but it's going to be hard to keep those micro He actually, they're very good against the Broodlords. He'll be able to push them back, I believe. But so many Broodlings already in play, deal dealing so much damage that, uh, you know, Gung Fu is just losing territory so fast. And... They've both got some money to burn. The supply is actually quite even compared to what it used to be, a 50 supply deficit for Gung Fu. The warp is coming in with Hyde Templar here as well, and he's actually able to push this back. I'm really surprised with all the Ultralist play that Gung Fu is able to survive this long. These Infestors burning their energy, actually going to try and get out, but there is an Observer here to spot them and they will get popped. So actually this is a bit of a bad trade for Jadong, I believe. Nexus will fall. This puts us in a kind of a fuzzy situation, don't you think? Yeah, well, this is game point for Jadong. So Jadong is going all out aggression. Even if he loses this by being too offensive, he's still got two more games. Gung Fu Banda, he knows this is his last opportunity, and he's not going to throw that away lightly. That's right. He actually uh, just remaxed his entire army back to 200 from that, uh, it was like 115 to 120 there earlier. Mm -hmm. He's able to. Zerg. I'm sorry, once these eggs finish, uh, he's look at his army is already right back at the front door of Gung Fu. He's on the ropes. I mean, he's got the, the Tempest, but now some Mutalists are actually going to come into play. What a big Muta Ball. I mean, forget the range on the Tempest. The speed of the Mutalists is going to overpower even Storms. Uh, these are, Mutas are actually pretty well spread out as well. And I just I don't see this happening for Gung Fu. This is so many Mutas out of nowhere. An interesting switch just to dump his money in and conquer in this possibly last game here. Yeah, well, when you get a thousand gas income every minute, you can make ten mutalisks per minute. The number of mutalisks that can pop out off of that are insane. Mutalisks are only really good in huge flocks with high upgrades. He's already got plus two attack with 32 mutalisks on the field. So the glaive bounce is basically a Zerg equivalent of a Colossi right now. 
that hits air. That it is, and he's already got plus three on the way to complement that even further. Gonna even be able to comfortably snipe the Stargate even with a couple of losses on those mutas. There's not a Phoenix count necessary to take this on. Gung Fu Bandit has nothing in the production queue. He is out of money. He has no mining capability whatsoever. He's down 100 supply. I think he's going to have to tap out here, and he does. Indeed, dude. That game was two desperate homeless people fighting over the last bite of a steak in the restaurant trash. Like, that was the desperation between these two players. I am actually quite revved up from seeing it myself. Uh, I actually thought Jadong had it in the in the bag in this third game a little bit earlier with that giant Ultra switch. Um, he was constantly knocking down the door of, of Gung Fu and, and he was doing everything just fine. Um, but uh, I didn't realize where, you know, I guess he just he kept the Ultralis back at home just in case there was some kind of counter aggression. He could easily deal with a couple of zealots with his Ultralis and his spines right there. Uh, just using the Zerglings only for the longest time. Those Zerglings with max upgrades deal quite a bit of damage and they're so cheap you could just keep remaxing them and tossing them in, tossing them in. They're almost like locusts that cost money, if you will, but they're so cheap once again that he can just keep sending them in, save his Ultralis for later. Didn't really lose many of them until he took out that uh, fourth base in the top left of Gung Fu. Uh, Jinong, uh, even though he had a couple, I think, bad trades, he, he was the conqueror here, definitely, throughout the entire series. Easily, man. That was a 3-0 sweep, as the scoreboard shows. Uh, Jadong definitely earning his his legacy in the annals of StarCraft history. Guys, I'm Shaft of the Planning Casting Crew. Big thank you to my co-caster, PMS H2O, Drew Universe. Uh, if you like uh, this content, please subscribe to our channel. Follow me on uh, Twitter. I'm at the only shaft. You can see the the the, the Twitter ID right there, right there. And uh, Drew, uh, feel free to go ahead and plug, uh, you know, PMS H2O stuff or you know, how people can stay in contact with you. Well. Uh, our website is at pmsclan.com, nice short URL there. We have a forum where you can uh, apply if you're interested in a gaming community. We have some very strong moral codes and values that we stand by, equality, no discrimination. Uh, we stand by it and live by it every day. And our StarCraft group uh, used to be quite large. It fell by the wayside for a while, but I'm here to bring it back and get this upswing started. We've already got a lot of new people coming in and a lot of the old ones returning. Uh, we're having fun practices over three times a week and even in between. We're entering tournaments, showing our name. Instead of just saying it, we're showing it. We believe in what we're doing. And uh, whether you would be interested in applying or not, we just thank you guys uh, for recognizing us in the scene at all. We're glad to come back to the StarCraft II scene. Awesome, dude. I can't wait to see uh, more updates from PMS H2O and see you here a little bit more often, dude. It's been a pleasure. Everybody, Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem, dude. Everybody at home watching this, please thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, as always, don't forget to be awesome. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,